Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everything Went Black podcast. Tonight, I'd like to welcome Jackie Roya. She's the compiler of this awesome zine called Cult, The Left Hand Path, Adventures in the Business Side of Creative. It's uh, basically uh, this resource zine that, uh, that she put together. Um, it's useful for anyone out there who's doing uh, freelance work in the creative fields, because let's face it, uh, none of us really know what the hell we're doing on the business side. So this is a pretty uh, invaluable resource. Uh, Zev Dean's also accompanied her for this evening. You're familiar with him definitely by now. You've seen his great videos, and he was a guest a little while back. So um, listeners are definitely familiar with him. Before we get started, I just want to go through all the plugs we've got on it, giving you the best supplements possible. Use on it pretty much every day. Um, you know, either with the MCT oil, krill oil, uh, hemp force protein, like that sort of stuff. Datsusara, who pretty much is an integral part of my daily life. I use my Datsusara bag every day, carry all my gear in it. When I go out on tour, that's my luggage. When I go out and visit my parents, put all my underwear, pants, sweatshirts, books, all that kind of stuff in there. It's a very versatile bag. And also it's made out of hemp. So if you're gonna support that movement, check out Datsusara. And you can reach all these places at everythingwentblackmedia.com. All the portals are over to the right. Click through, help me keep the lights on around here. Last but not least, we got Savage Gold Coffee. Coffee lovers, check out savagegoldcoffee.com. Last time I was over the, the place with Zev, he gave me this book here mm -hmm. that, um, that you produced here, this zine. Yeah. And um, it's uh, chock full of information. It is. Yeah. And, and uh, it's, very, it's like a slim sort of volume, but there's quite a bit of information, especially for people who are independent sort of workers and freelancers. And a lot of the... Like, Zeb and I discussed the fact that the two of us don't really know anything about how to run a business or how to protect ourselves legally or how to enter into an agreement with a client or any of those kinds of things. Yeah. So a lot of that is covered in this zine. Okay. So how did you gather all this information? Like, you know, I mean, all of it is from my own like personal experiences. Like I worked in advertising for a while. I've done freelance on the side. Like, I've worked with, like, a bunch of different, like, types of people. So it's literally all just stuff that I've learned and wanted to, like, you know, like, get across. Because, like, I fucked up in the beginning. I had no yeah. idea what I was doing. I didn't have contracts or anything like that. Like, people wouldn't pay me. I'd be like, okay, I guess that's fine. But, like, and now, you know, like, now I feel like I kind of know what I'm doing. And I kind of want to share that. Cool. So. It's a nice looking uh, design, too. Like, the layout. You know, it's got this really cool like cover and everything. Is that is that a part of your background too? Is, is uh, design and layout and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I love print design more than anything. And honestly, this kind of like became a physical object because I really wanted to make something physical and I wanted to like specifically like hand bind something. And I was like, well, I kind of wanted to like put this thing together with all this like information about freelance stuff. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna design it exactly how I want it to look, and then I'm gonna like get it printed and like actually bind it together. So, and that's her profession. Yes, it is. No, it's design. <laughs> yeah. It's design. Yeah. Also that. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Because um, it's, so it's called Cult: The Left Hand Path, mm -hmm. Adventures in the Business Side of Creative. Yes. Okay. And um, what I found interesting is that you don't really credit yourself in here anywhere. I don't. <laughs> I was like, it's not. It's not about trying to like promote myself like in any way, really. Like my site is on the back if people are interested in looking at like what I do, actually. But like, it's not. Like I'm not trying to be like I'm awesome. Like I just want people to read this and then like go out into the world and like, be fucking awesome. One one of the things I could say that uh, probably, um, because something like this, you, you know, you go through it. You, the people might have like further questions, so the site's mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. Okay, but. Um, there's only a hundred of these, right? It says the one I have is 22 of 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have to believe that there's more than a hundred people out there that would want to have, the, have their hands on this document here. Maybe. I so. mean, I printed 25 the first run and they sold out in less than 24 hours. Like I was shocked. Honestly, I was like, floored by how much like, support I got and so I immediately called my printer I was like Ramel I need like a hundred more and I need them like tomorrow 
And so, like, now I have 100 sitting in my desk. Cool. I'm, like, waiting to, yeah. All right, so this uh, 22 of 100 is just out of this particular print run. Second print run. Okay, yes. cool. Mm-hmm. And how did how did you promote this? Like, how did people find, you know, how did you get the word out for people to, to know that this thing exists? I mean, nothing but Twitter and also Instagram and also people like Zev, like, just kind of, like, sharing it on Facebook. So I'm not on Facebook because I'm a crazy person. Facebook.com. No. And... <laughs> And, um, and so, yeah, so it was just, like, people sharing it, and, like, all of a sudden, like, all the orders were coming in. Like, people, like, a lot of my friends who are in the same industry as me, like, they were buying them up the first day. So. Wow. It was really cool. So it was, like, a pretty grassroots sort of campaign, uh, yeah. you know, using uh, social media and, quote, unquote, viral marketing to get the, the word out there? If you want to call it that, yes. Okay. But Twitter, absolutely, Twitter is fucking awesome for this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that Twitter, do you find that Instagram is sort of overtaking Twitter in some ways? I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on how you use it. Like, brands are starting to use Instagram in, like, a really annoying way. Like, I, I log on and, like, all these little notifications, like, happen and it's just, like, these brands that are just liking the last two posts of yours. But, like, Twitter is actually, like, like, like it's people. Like, they're people yeah. that you're interacting with. And so, like, for me personally, I think Twitter is always going to be, like, a better platform. Instagram is just, like, I just like to put pictures on there. Yeah. yeah. I, I use that for a lot of different things on Instagram. Like I, I use a lot of sort of advertising type stuff for various, for the podcast that you're, you're on right now, for the yeah. coffee company and the band and stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Social media, it's never something back in the old days of Friendster and, you know, oh. and MySpace and all that stuff. I didn't think I'd ever have any interest in, in u- utilizing any of this stuff. I never yeah. saw the need for it, but now it's like, that's kind of the way things, uh, you know, happen. Like everyone's identity is sort of wrapped up in this, you know, two dimensional reduction of their personality into the the finest moments of the day being presented to everybody. Yeah. I don't know. It's like an interesting sort of, um, you know, overmind that's being created, I think, through, you know, social media and everything. Yeah, you know? it's very curated. And like sometimes it's hard for people to like remember that. Like you see all these people and they're just like, you know, I'm traveling here and I'm doing this and I'm buying this. And then and then people like get that thing where they're just like, oh, my God, my life isn't as cool as that. But it's just like I, it's I've just said bullshit. Yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've been like, man, everyone else is having so much more fun than I am. And she's like, it's just it's Instagram. People yeah. put the, only put the best moments. Yeah. 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 I feel the same way about that. I'm just like, you know, I, mean, I don't obviously I. I'm on Facebook and all that stuff, but I'm not like, I'm not very active in like posting unless it's, there's some purpose for it. You know what I mean? I'm not like, check me out, my cat, and like <laughs> chilling. Isn't this great? You know, we got like, you know, Trump like, got me like, no, Nicole. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, advertising is, it's, uh, that's what I use it for as well, promotionally. But uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to keep politics out of it sometimes. Yeah. Kind of a trigger finger. <laughs> 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 so you, there's a website address on here mm-hmm. and that that's your site yeah that's my site where i have a lot of my like freelance stuff and stuff that i've done in the past that i can actually post in public so yeah. what do you mean like it's, it's like some sort of like you know like transgressive <laughs> like work you've been doing <laughs> creepy big pharma no i work in uh <laughs> pharmaceutical advertising right now which is like as boring as it sounds and i cannot post anything in public because it's all crazy private client clients like contract like just i can't so like i it looks like i've been doing nothing for the past like four (laughs) years but yeah oh so in other words like uh stuff that you might use as like examples of your work yeah yeah it's like like a portfolio basically so like i just put like the fun stuff up there yeah but you're working on like super clandestine like Mm. sort of brand related things yeah like drugs yeah 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 drug dealer yeah, I, I sell drugs. Well, you know, in reality, that's kind of what these companies are. There's these yeah, they are legal multi million dollar drug dealing companies. You know, yes, oh, yeah. who can like it's legal for them to sell drugs. Like, it's <laughs> insane. Yeah. Is yeah. the Maryland Death Fest thing still up on the site? Yeah, it is. That's right. Yeah. What uh, What did you do for Maryland Death Fest? Um, there was a couple years in a row where I did the actual program guide for MDF, oh, okay. and that was like a bunch of fun. Like I was like loosely affiliated with invisible oranges at the time and like that's when cosmo kind of had Mm -hmm. just stepped away but his last kind of hurrah was doing like the guide and kind of like you know like getting the writers and like kind of like setting that whole thing up and he just gave me free reign 
to design it and I was just like this is awesome and it, it turned out to be this beautiful like magazine size piece with like interviews and like really awesome photos and I guess info on the thing and it's like still one of my favorite things that I've ever done. So. Have you have you been down to Maryland Death Fest? Do you go regularly or? I've only been once, which is like weird for someone like me to like say because I love music so much. But like I, there was one year where uh, Necros Christos and Ruins of Everass were playing, and I was just like, yeah, can't miss that. So I went for that day, and it was like mind blowingly awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then fun. I went back home the next day. <laughs> I was like, you just That's went enough. down for the one day. Yeah. I've done that before yeah. actually. I um I went down to see Godflesh. It was oh. right when Godflesh started becoming active again. Mm. Yeah. It was uh Godflesh and Napalm Death that day. Nice. And um nineteen ninety two all over again. Yeah, <laughs> totally, man. So that was I just went down for the day and then like drove back basically. Or actually yeah, it was just the day we drove back. Because, like dealing with that holiday traffic too, man. Like if you stay yeah, for the whole thing. I know. It's rough. Yeah. You know? And I, I played MDF uh, twice, so it was once, twice, twice, yeah. But um, yeah, Necros Christos, man, it's like, <laughs> that. that's like a band that not too many people are familiar with, but like, I feel like the people that are, know about that band, like, love them. Yeah. They're yeah. so good. They're so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Some sat- satanic death metal. <laughs> yeah. It's one of your specialties. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So, um... I'm taking it that you're a fan of extreme music, then. Yes, very much. Okay. Yes. And um, have you done, aside from the Maryland Death Fest uh, material, have you done any, any other kind of design work within, you know, that sort of, uh, you know, world? or? Um, I do here and there. Like, I was uh, kind of, like, helping my friends, like, do some blog stuff. Like, they had a blog. It, well, they still do. It's called Nine Circles. And I did the logo, and I kind of, like, helped them revamp their whole, like, WordPress template. I do sometimes, like, I do band logos and just, like, album artwork and, like, stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. What what stuff have you done as far as album artwork and all that? Um, I did a, like, thing last year that was just kind of more for fun. Um, I took my favorite nine albums from that year and I just redesigned the covers. So they were all, it's kind of just like a, you know how everyone does, like, year-end lists? Yeah, yep. Like, I just tried to make a visual one to do something different, which was, like, super fun. Because I just, like, redesigned them all into, like, this kind of, like, weird, minimal, like, spare style, which is, like, kind of my thing. Nice, yeah, nice. it was really fun. What, what were the records? Do you remember? Yeah, um, Vastum <laughs> was one of them. Uh, I loved them. Um, the, from California. Yeah. Uh... Who else? Malthusian. Yeah, Malthusian. Was, oh, yeah, Malthusian. Oh, my God, awesome, dude. Yeah. Like, their live show is still one of my favorite live shows that I've ever seen. I've never seen Malthusian. Oh, you yeah, have to. We played, like, yeah. twice in a week. In the yeah, year. and we went and both, we both times. Both time. <laughs> yeah. That name always uh, interests me. You know, Malthus, the philosopher, mm-hmm. be- he believed that man, like, man's barbaric nature. Like, I, I'm just off the top of my head. I'm just thinking, <laughs> yeah. like, he believed that, like, like, you know, primordial man lived these, like, short violent unhappy lives <laughs> and whenever that that's actually why i started like when i saw the name malthusian for a band i'm like oh this is like i gotta check this out and sure enough they're they're an awesome they're band perfect, yeah. Yeah. it fits the uh, malthusian sort of philosophical angle you know yeah, yeah they, they, they fit into that whole cosmic pessimism thing that like portal and bands like that fit in also just this kind of like there's there's yeah it's like a sort of spatial nihilism i guess yeah 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 i mean they, that definitely comes across but like for some reason when you see them live like it's like this transcendent and like you're just so uplifted afterwards which is very weird considering yeah. like what they sound like yeah and almost everyone that i talk to that has seen them has felt the same way like you just leave and they're just like fuck that was awesome are they are they from the u.s uh ireland ah, I, I knew they were from somewhere else yeah. i didn't think they were american what were some of the other I actually kind of don't remember right now. I think there was an Obsequia, album by right? Obsequia come at, came out, I think, that year. That was an awesome record. Um, and then I think Desecracy was, like, another right. band that I really liked that put out something awesome. Oh, she's got all yeah. the deep cut stuff. I, I, yeah. I, was, I was doing... Uh, I, I got so used to doing work for bands like this that I stopped paying attention to, to new stuff coming in and right then when i started talking to her she just just sort of i don't know just like showed me a whole <laughs> like new tier of things i'd never heard of so i've been very lucky to be around this person because uh, i've learned a lot 
Yeah, but Matushka, again, like, yeah. I would not have known about them. I was going to bring that up, that yeah. you are the reason why actually both of us know about Matushka. Really? Yeah, because, like, yeah. you told Zev, and yeah. Zev told me about it, and then now I'm obsessed with the yeah. Schema Monks. They were, they just dropped that record with almost no press in December of last year, and I, I heard it, and I was just like, holy fuck, <laughs> everyone has to hear this right fucking now <laughs> and everyone that i sent it to was just floored by it and then i think they've got some they had some steam rolling earlier this year because like people just were spreading the album because like there was like you know the whole mystery thing where no one knew who was in it and it just like picked up steam on its own because i think just purely because it's so great yeah how'd you find out about them like oh my friend uh my friend lev sent the album oh, i know to lev yeah yeah from anacon and, and oh no a oh, different, oh, I'm sorry. different lev yeah oh, so i don't know lev no. it's a different guy lev. Yeah. That's a unique name in some circles. <laughs> yeah. No, he sent it to me. He's like, I think you would like this. And he was dead on. Cool. Yeah. Because it's like, uh, there seems to be a lot of cool bands from Poland like these days, you know, like with Mugwabi and like, you know, they came over here last year or was mm -hmm. that earlier this year or whatever. Yeah. And, um, you know, Krieg's Machine, you know, bands like that. And uh, so, yeah, Batushka, man, it's like, the visual component of it too is, is pretty compelling. And then, you know, we discussed the, the scheme of monks and this weird Christian sort of aesthetic, but mm -hmm. let me ask you this question. I don't know like how deeply you can check that aspect of it out, but you know, um, you know, it's just Christian sort of orthodoxy. Do you think that, um, it's similar to like Santeria or like where, uh, you know, the Caribbean people in order to, practice their indigenous religion took on the trappings of like christianity to kind of mask that you know because we were we were discussing that that's oh, yeah, basically because... goddess worship you know yeah. and this big nature angle and all this sort of stuff i yeah. mean i don't really know but i feel like that makes sense to do like were they persecuted for practicing like what they well the catholic when the roman catholics came through you you had to either get with the program or yeah. get the sword you know what i mean yeah, yeah. well then they crucified yeah. you or and something so, yeah. so they yeah. were according to dude um mm. <laughs> <laughs> he who shall remain nameless in polish um yeah according to him like it was a it was a pagan group of uh monks of some sort and then they did have to make that transition, I guess, in the 1300s. Mm -hmm. I mean, but clearly it's alive in yeah. pockets. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they have, like, uh, in their secret ceremonies, you know, when, when <laughs> they're just like, okay, guys, we're going to drop the Jesus Christ stuff, <laughs> and, like, we're just going to go deep with, like, the real deal stuff now. Uh, I, would, I would hope so. I think I, what it seems like is that just so many centuries have passed that, that they've forgotten almost. Yeah. Um, from, from what... I could tell when we're at the churches, um, they're pretty, they, they, that's what they're, that's what they think now, but it's still oriented around like <clears throat> the Virgin Mary and, and, um, yeah, this sort of the mother figure, this, this, uh, maternal iconography and then very much nature oriented. I mean, they're, they're this sort of communion with the animals and St. Francis being a big one. And they're just very much, uh, sort of without knowing it necessarily echoing these pagan values you know it's funny man i kind of wish like when i was back in college i I'd, I'd studied like religions or something like that because i find i'm so fascinated by like you know like the um man's preoccupation with sort of understanding the universe but sort of rather than looking deeply into it and trying to like you know intellectualize it they just pass the buck onto these like figures Oh yeah, it's God, you know, or yeah. Odin or whoever, you know, Allah is like, he's the one who created yeah. all this sort of stuff, you know. I mean, it's easy to wrap up in like a nice little bow because it doesn't leave any, any questions unanswered. Like when you look at how religion kind of like, just like neatly parcels out like what happens when you die and like what happens, you know, like back in the day, like what, you know, why did the, why did it rain to make the crops grow? And, you know, like, I feel like people are uncomfortable with unanswered questions. So. Yeah, definitely. And why not leave it to a, a metal band to, to, to inform you instead mm -hmm. of having gone to school for it? Because you know? <laughs> then you can do other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so did you? is your background in art and design and that sort of stuff? Um, I went to school for design, and I also minored in art history. And like I took 
like modern art and I'm sorry to everyone that this will offend does not interest me at all. Like I love this, stuff I guarantee the- you no one's gonna be offended <laughs> by that. Most people probably, you know, that listen to this podcast, I don't yeah. think Yeah. yeah. Don't I don't want to offend them, them but talk shit about modern yeah. art. Yeah, I think modern art is generally bullshit, but I love stuff from like the Middle Ages and the Renaissance and stuff, and that's all the stuff that <clears throat> was all completely religious. And honestly, like I learned more about religion from my art history classes than I did ever anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See, for me, like you know, art, like I like Spawn, you know, the Todd McFarlane <laughs> character, uh-huh. and you know, H.R. Geiger, Frank Frazetta, and stuff like. That. Oh yeah. I know a little bit about, but not. I'm not one of. I don't. I'm not a. You know, like. <laughs> Saddam Hussein was a huge Frank Frazetta fan. <laughs> really? Is that true? <laughs> really? Very true. When I they, could see that. There was a movie where they um, that shows all the the American soldiers hanging out in his palace uh, after they took it over, and he's got Frank Frazetta paintings like no all, way all over the yeah just prominently displayed in the stairwells and things like that. He's a big fan. Fun fact, totally random. Yeah. yeah. I, I like fucked around with some you know some when I was a kid in my. Uh, high school years taking art classes and everything but i wanted to, i think i wanted to be an illustrator because it's like i'd always draw things with like capes and like dudes with swords and like guys <laughs> flying and women and stuff like that you know and and i just couldn't really i couldn't if someone told me like i, I didn't take direction very well you know what i mean because they want you to do other things besides draw guys hacking dragons to pieces you know and riding harleys and stuff like that <laughs> so it's like I, I, so I abandoned that, you know. They crushed your dreams, man. You know what? It's I kind of think that there's a lot to that of that old school educational system of not promoting free thought, really. Well, yeah, they, yeah. they, they make, you know, you have to, especially with the type of teachers that you can have in a school or a university, I mean, chances are that there's going to be a narrowing of what what is considered art or what is considered expression and it can turn off a lot of people who would otherwise be perfect for it my i remember this is like very this, this is like a, a traumatic moment from my my childhood actually oh, we're getting deep yeah, we're yeah. Getting deep so i was uh you know i was That's in cool. ap uh english the whole time you know all through my high school until i hit senior year okay we got one particular uh teacher that i had where we were re- it was either my senior or junior year. I can't remember which one, but he was like into music. So the first day of class, I'm like, oh, this guy's probably cool. You know, he's probably like a free, free, freer kind of guy. But he was like the curriculum dictated that there was like very, very rigorous sentence structures and how to put paragraphs together and all this sort of stuff. And like I did so poorly in that class that <laughs> mid-semester, he called in my parents to have a meeting. <laughs> Shit. Okay. And they were just like, this isn't, you know, we need, you, sh- you should consider withdrawing from this class and going back with the other Philistines in the school and like <laughs> s- studying, you know, English on a normal level because oh, this man. is clearly not for you, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I, I got taken out of the class and it like crushed me, man, because I was just like, because I, you know, that was ever since I was, ever since I could remember being alive, I've loved writing and reading and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I, I took it personal, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, so that must have been my junior year because the following year we actually became pretty friendly because he was like way into music, you know. And I was like, you know, he's like, oh, that's that guy from my class, you know. He's like, looks weird and everything. And like, I think he's in, you know, I was like, wears black all the time. He must be into <laughs> cool stuff. And, and he gave me a cassette of like the replacements, Tim. And I was like, yeah, this is great. And that's how I got into Tim. So the same guy, there's like a yin and yang situation of yeah. like a, you know, one hand slaps me and the other one sort of nourishes me like creatively by giving this uh, this record. It's the best kind of teacher in a weird way. Yeah. No, no, I hear you, man. Yeah. yeah. They like I set boundaries out. and then they, they help you break them. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was kicked out of uh, governor's school for the arts in, in high school. Really? It was devastating because I was like, I thought I was like much like an AP class. It's yeah. like a magnet school. So they take you out of high school. You get to go on a bus with all the other weird, smart, talented kids and then like go somewhere else and just be weird all day. And, uh, I got kicked out of that and, uh, I have outperformed all of them. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. But no, yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it does like give you this, give you this fire that, uh, we actually have to try harder because otherwise I think you can get comfortable if you're, if you're just, applauded your entire upbringing that kind of put me in a in a, a weird 
like pathway though in my life because I, I also was a very good student in math and science. However, not nearly as good as I was with like the sort of more, you know, literature based stuff. And uh, but then I, I embraced that fully, man. And then I started. I went into engineering when I was in college. Wow. So I I got no exposure to any of this cool stuff that you would if you had a typical liberal, liberal arts background. You know, and it's just like I went so far away from like the sort of stuff that I should be doing that it took me like doubly the effort to get back onto you know onto the same course. You know what I mean? So. But I don't know. But it fuels you. It, it, every everything that happens does become part of what you produce in a weird way. Yeah, I mean, it's like you know, kind of uh, the discipline of doing that sort of stuff was cool. You know, like created a really good work ethic, and you know, it's like doing like, you know, it's like cutting weight in wrestling or something like that. It's like it sucks, but it sort of like gives you the mental fortitude to continue doing stuff you don't like doing, you know, or you know, you know, it's not the right thing or whatever. So. Mm-hmm. But you know, I don't know. It's all part of the <clears throat> part of the the journey, I guess. You know. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so your academic experience was it was it as it, as fulfilling as mine? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I just went to school and like just did stuff. Like high school was just like well, like I kind of skated through high school. Yeah. I didn't really give that much of a fuck about it. Like I got B's, which my parents were just like, just apply yourself, and I was like, eh. And like art was cool, but I knew I knew that like going into like art as like a like a fine artist was not viable as like a I don't know why I was so like pragmatic or like just responsible as a sixteen year old who who thinks that way when they're sixteen. Well, actually, did did you come from like a kind of working class like middle like sort of background like a middle class background where your you know your parents like had regular jobs and stuff? And yeah, like- I mean, my mom, my mom actually, I mean, she. She stopped working for a while when she had, you know, kids. Yeah, of course. And then, and then she actually went back to school to get her master's, and she oh. was like working a lot in, in like the the field of, you know, just like kind of like advocating for parents with kids with disabilities. So she was like very gung ho and like very like you know awesome in that. And my dad was a like a train engineer, so I had oh, wow, like okay. kind of both sides. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're you're a native of New York, Jersey. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Joyce. I mean, Same no one. Thing. You know, I'm from like upstate not upstate but like you know like the westchester county area and mm-hmm. everything you know yeah yeah so i've lived around here my like whole life well, that's cool basically so yeah she had that uh, <clears throat> that stern uh, pragmatic upbringing yeah yeah i mean and it's from that background it's really hard to do stuff that's not that doesn't fit in any particular mold really yeah you know? i mean my, i grew up with like plumbers and like carpenters you know yeah. no one in my family even went to college to well now i have some younger there are younger generations in my family and they've educated themselves properly. Mm-hmm. But my, you know, my, my parents, n- n- no college, you know, my dad was in the Navy, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, he's like a, he did really well for himself, but it's like that sort of your, your young mind is molded by those observations of your, your family. Yeah. So it's like in order to move out of that, it's like such a, it's almost like everything's stacked against you. And to, to this day, when I go and visit my parents, I have doubts about things. It's like <laughs> the funniest thing, you know? It's like, yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm doing okay. But like whenever I talk to my parents, I'm like, I don't know, man. Maybe I should have, you know, I don't know. Maybe I should have took that job. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's nice though. You always like to trying to, you know, like think up and like maybe better yourself and like second guess yourself because yeah like i think zeb was saying not long ago like you can't get comfortable in like what you're doing because that that's boring yeah definitely it's awesome unless it's just like incredibly awesome and you get paid a million dollars a week well let me know when that exists (laughs) (laughs) yeah but you know what i think that probably if you had a gig where you're getting paid that much money you'd still find some other thing to do that you wouldn't have any connection to your or, or a significant other or something like that. You'd have, there'd be, there's got to be a hole somewhere. In there. Yeah. Yeah. Got to be balanced. So you're getting your start in um, in advertising. Did you go right out of college and get into advertising? or? I mean, no. I got I got my first job off Craigslist, and that was working at Everlast, which is the boxing company. Oh, really? Yeah, I, nice. was, I was there for six years. Right on. Boxing, MMA, 
really? all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that was fun and also weird. It was like everyone that I tell that to, they're like, that's awesome. I was like, yeah, it was okay because it was like a tiny company in New York. It was like 30 people and like we did everything in house. So like I did everything. So at first job out of college, like it's just like thrown right in the deep end. You learn everything like print stuff, web stuff, like stuff for like in ha- like store sales and just like all that boring stuff. But I did product design, like I did like fashion design, like wow. literally everything. So that was really, yeah. Campaigns came later because uh, my friend Meredith, uh, now she, she joined the company and she was like really strong in marketing and she came from an advertising background. And so we together created this campaign that like was, we're still really super proud of. Like it was just so strong and awesome. Um, and then we both left, and I'm pretty sure everything went downhill. Really? So, <laughs> yeah. Was that was that an overall positive experience though? Like, I mean, I mean, pe- were people cool you work with, or people were pretty cool. Like, we had a pretty good mix of people. You know, like it, when you think boxing, you kind of think maybe there's some like old timers, like some guys that have been there for like 30 years, and you know, and like they're they're there. But we also had like some young people in the marketing team, and like all of us were really close. Like it was, it was just like a very varied motley of people. Everyone was like a cartoon character, but it was like it was fun. Most of the time. Did uh, you get yeah. tickets to any fights or anything like that? Or? Yeah, I went really? to a, a middleweight championship down in Atlantic City once. It was like Jermaine Taylor, I think, was fighting. Yeah, he was one of our, our sponsored boxers. And that was really fun. Like, I, I went with, like, a date. And, like, we made, like, the whole thing. We got, like, dressed up like you used to. And, like, the fight was really exciting. Like, it was really closely matched. And, like, they were just not going down. And, like, and everyone would just stand up all at once and, like, scream and then sit back down. It was, like, church almost. It was, like, great. Like, the energy was so electric. And then I've also been to, like, some amateur, like, stuff, like, up, in, you know, in the city and, and things like that. MMA fights I've seen a couple times. Yeah. Out in Jersey or in the city? Um, I saw one down in Atlantic City and I think uh, yeah. another one in Vegas. Yeah, that's because that's you know up until this past, this is legal now here yeah. in the states. But it just happened. There would still, there still were like you know kind of like that. This, this is the weird thing about it not being legal in the, in New York. That all that means is that it's not sanctioned. Right. Okay, but there were still like MMA fights that used to go on in the city. Yeah. Without sanctioning or licensing or you know medical checkups and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So it didn't really get in the way. It only got in the way of people making money because of yeah. like the big promotions coming here but it didn't save you know make it safer for anybody it made it yeah. more dangerous actually yeah. that's awesome man <laughs> that sounds like fun though it, was. But it also sounds like it set you up to do a lot of different things i mean it i mean it did i mean it kind of really almost like instilled this like diy aesthetic in me because like literally everything that we wanted to make happen we made happen ourselves like we um, for the campaign that I was just talking about, like our Unleash campaign, um, we we were just like, oh, let's try to do something like off the computer. And so we were literally on our balcony, like spray painting like letters, like stencils. And then we like scanned that in. And like I had a like a designer that worked with me that was so talented. And I mean, his name is Jeremy. He is he's doing awesome. He's out in California. But like just, it was just the two of us and then Meredith, like our marketing director. And we just like hit that shit right out of the park. It was great. And then, uh, so when did you actually decide to um, segue into doing freelance work? Um, I've always done that, like, on the side. Like, it's just something that, like, just kind of happens naturally. You know, you'll have, like, a friend or, like, a you know, your mom's friend or whoever is like, I need, like, a thing, like, a logo or, like, a whatever. And you're like, yeah, like, okay, I'll do it. And, like, all of a sudden you're kind of like, oh, my God, like, I can make money doing this on the side. And so you kind of, like, start looking for, like, things. And just, like, because you don't have, I mean, because I don't have a lot of time in my life outside of work like I always try to work on fun things so mm-hmm. that's why I like that you know like invisible oranges and like MDF and all that kind of stuff came about because I, I like to do stuff like in music when I can because that's where I like my interests overlap so I mean was that ever a goal of yours or it was just something that 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 sort of you know it sort of approached you and you saw it you sort of like solidifying and you're like okay like, cause did you have like an adversarial relationship with your day job? Like, was it something that was like crushing your soul and you had to get away from it? A little or, bit. Or was it something where you're like, you know, Hey man, I'm just going with the flow. I like this, but this looks like it would give me more freedom. Like, what was the scenario like? I mean, the day job, I mean, especially Everlast. And then also when I segued into advertising, it was all pharmaceutical. So it's just right. dry boring like and just like completely like the antithesis of like what i would design like like as as an aesthetic 
So, like, when I, like, I, w- I would just try to seek out things that would, like, just make me feel fulfilled creatively. Like, I would, you know, have free reign over what I was doing, and I would make it look how I wanted, and, like, all that kind of shit. So, like, it, it made me feel better about what I was doing during the day. <laughs> yeah. So, when you went 100% freelance, what was that experience like? No, I'm still, I'm still okay, you're day still, job. Okay, yeah. so you're Cut still, that. all right. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, because that's, that's, some, like, I was going to talk about, like, you know, like, like, the uh the aspect of security and that kind of stuff yeah that's scary actually like i won't go freelance because i i know the ups and downs and and i know that like you don't get shit like health insurance and like whatever like it it's like i need like a steady paycheck and again maybe like it is like because i grew up with parents like mine who were always like very like responsible and stuff which is something that I honestly didn't really think about until we were sitting right here talking about that, like just like kind of like who my parents are. Like I feel like I'm in therapy right now. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a good podcast, man. Yeah. It's not your average one. The uh, yeah, because that that's something like, like you know, you just got to pull a trigger sometimes. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, like for me, for me, like I I I literally it was only, it wasn't even like I just knew I didn't want to work for these fucking people anymore anyway. and it wasn't even like i had a plan or any of that shit i just one day i was like i mean for me it's like it was cool because i got to go on tour and then they were like oh you know when you're done touring come back but i'd marginalized myself to the point where it's like i wasn't doing anything cool at all and uh then I went little by little i was just like coming in late you know <laughs> leaving early on the same day i come in late you know working from home not really doing my job that I, you know, not, not putting my best foot forward, I guess. And mm-hmm. I was just like, I gotta leave, man. I was gonna fucking go in one day and just murder everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, like my hand was forced a little bit, you know, cause I still, to this day, I would still like to remain, uh, outside of, I would re- like to remain within the law on my activities from day to day. So, <laughs> sure. yeah. But yeah, it's a tough step though. Is that, yeah. is that a step that you think you'd ever take? I mean, maybe if I knew that I would have enough of a client base to not have, like, crazy ups and downs where I'm, like, spending... By those zines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't want to go three months without knowing where my my job is going to... You know, like, I have friends who do freelance, and, like, I just, like, I don't know how they do it. Like, I, I watch them go up and down, yeah. and, like, this is, this is it's... Kind of selling point for your zine, right? Because you're, like, <laughs> you're, like, no, I don't do it. <laughs> let's go with let's start over let's go with the whole like you're a freelancer and it's great because here's how you do i'm it making piles of money <laughs> but it's i mean the thing is though it's still the the content of the zine is like pretty rad i mean i've, I've you know i'm telling people about it and they're really? just like that exists i'm like yeah this is That's like awesome out there and you know i'm probably going to utilize some of this stuff too I mean, a lot of it does also come from the fact that I am in advertising and like it, the way that it works when you're in advertising, like you're just servicing a client. And so you learn a lot about like, just like client, like agency relations and like how the process works. And I think the process is like really what's missing when people are freelance because they're like, well, I'm a designer or I'm a writer. I can do this or like I'm an artist. And you kind of don't think about like the whole, like you have to wear all these different fucking hats. You have to be, like, the schmoozing account guy yeah. and, like, the finance guy who's, like, screaming his head off and, like, you know, like, the project manager. Like, you, there's a lot that goes into it. And, Absolutely. And it's not as easy as just, like, being, like, oh, I have a laptop. I can go to a cafe and make a logo. Like, <laughs> no. Especially if you're right-brain-oriented because then you find yourself <clears throat> doing all these left-brain things. Yeah. That, um, you could probably be doing a lot better, which is why that thing's great. And that's why I value the time I spent in engineering is because like, you know, I mean, honestly, dude, it's like, it's, a, it's like, it's saved, kind of saved my ass a lot of times as far as like having organizational and, pro- and problem solving abilities. Cause it's like, that's really all it is. It's just like, you know, organizing shit and problem solving. Logistics. So yeah, yeah logistics, yeah. Lots but, of brain activity. Yeah. Yes. but it's kind of, I would find there'd be days where it's like, okay, cool. I'm going to wake up. I got this to do. Boom. I got to write this thing or whatever, you know? And then I spend like two hours answering fucking emails. In the morning <laughs> yeah. of like, and then it'll be like, not just the answer, but it'll be like, then the return, the response. And then yeah. you have, and it's important shit because it's another project or some sort of like thing that you, piece of information you need. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, the whole morning is shot. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even get yeah I know. So like time management. It gets you know? in the way like a lot. And, like, I mean, especially because I have, like, clients on the side and I have my day job, like, I, 
maybe possibly spend my time doing freelance stuff at work while I'm supposed to be doing oh, other work that. shit. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. But I mean, one of the things that like I picked up from, I went to this, this designer retreat a couple of years ago in Palm Springs, California. Um, and most of it was useless, but one of the things that I did pick up was that, um, this chick, this designer illustrator who d- is a freelancer, she, um, she has her like, administration mondays i think she calls it where you just do all that shit on monday emails yeah. invoices like timelines like all that kind of garbage and you just get it done mm-hmm. and then for the rest of the week she just draws and does whatever the hell she needs to do so like that i was like if i ever do freelance i think i might try to like employ that as like a way to just like knock that shit out and then i just find my days don't really end man it's like <laughs> yeah. it's the uh, i mean you know yeah. the deal but it's um especially once you deal with like international stuff yeah Oh, yeah. The clock. yeah and um well that's interesting you mentioned that because editors kind of work that way where it's like if you pitch something you can't you should only do it tuesday wednesday and thursday mm-hmm. because monday friday everyone shuffles papers around and leaves early mm-hmm. okay <laughs> then the weekend oh, and then the monday day. is when everyone answers everything they didn't do on friday right and then tuesday is when you get answers and you know what someone told me that my friend jamie who works for he's he writes for like the guardian and all these you know and all this other you know noisy and vice and everything yeah and he's the scottish dude and he's just like you know in that like fucked up accent that they have you know? <laughs> he's just like he's like don't ever you know don't ever try to pitch anything on a monday a monday or a friday and i'm like okay <laughs> so that, and that, i was like fuck this guy what does he know you know and he just works for the guardian you know and it turns out that he was actually right because no one would ever answer anything that I sent to them until Tuesday. Yeah. So I don't even bother. I like put together my pitches on Monday. Yeah. You know, and just send it out first thing in the morning and I always get answers. So that's good. Yeah. But you know, it's, uh, but yeah, time management, you know, it's rough, man. That's why this room in, that we're in right now looks like a disaster <laughs> because it's like, you it's know. very busy. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, a lot of it's, you know, it's coffee here. There's like band stuff. There's a million journals that I'm using to try to write lyrics. It's the room of a very busy, productive person. And then the rest of my apartment, I try to keep like relatively, you know, safe and sort of Same. sound. Except for that, I have, I don't know if you noticed when you came in though, but there's the, uh, a five gallon uh, cold press brewing right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that's, that's for Sunday, the uh, St. Vitus Halloween flea market. Oh, sweet. Oh. Yeah. Sunday? Yeah. Sunday, yeah. Sunday night? Sunday, I think it's it starts at one and it goes till six. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, we might miss. Yeah. Are you coming back from out of town? Hey man, I didn't Sorry. I didn't say you had to go. I was just telling <laughs> you when the fuck. <laughs> no, that, that would be I know. I would like, like to go. It, yeah. I mean, if you can make it. If not, if you want me to save you a, a growler or something like that of the cold oh, press. Oh yeah. Yes. Hundred percent. Cool. Yeah. You know, even you know now that it's, well, it's, it's supposed to be cold today, but it's like eighty-one degrees. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I wasn't going to be selling by the glass of, because, uh, you know, most people want hot coffee. You know, yeah. I think it's going to be cooler this weekend. So, but I, but people did hit me up about getting their hands on larger volumes of the cold press. So, nice. there you go. So, yeah, anyone out there plan to go to St. Vitus? I'll be there on Sunday. I'll be selling all kinds of shit. Shirts. Come check out that savage goodness. My new soap. Gold. Yeah. There's soap, too. There's soap. There's soap now. Nice. Yeah. Say? It's modeled after the Fight Club. Well, the stuff. the advertising campaign was based around that. Oh, I keep thinking that you actually carved. No, 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 no. That was all. Uh, <laughs> that was all graphic wizardry. Gotcha. Okay. So, Animation. So real. Yeah. That was funny because I just happened to um, coincidentally I had a black eye, so I was like, you know what, man? Let me utilize this and get the the most <laughs> injury or whatever. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, man, I, I love Fight Club because it kind of encapsulates a lot of... Are you a fan of that movie? That movie is and awesome, book. and the book is better, yes. Do you find yourself enjoying the movie better, though? The movie, of course, is more enjoyable, but like as a, as a book, it's just like excellent. Like yeah. It's just, oh, yeah. I'm not really a big Palinuk fan, though. I think that's probably what it is. I was in college... Because I was in college and I was like early twenties and I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. But now I'm just like, mm. it's just it seems a little juvenile. That's that's the thing. It's like I've only read it like I think three of his books. I read Fight Club. Um, I read this book called Choke. Oh, Choke, yeah. Choke is good. And then Smile about the porno shoot. Uh, I don't think I read that. Yeah, I, 
I had to fly to Europe, and I was, I was like, yeah. you know what, Lynn, this book sounds perfect. I bought it, like, at the airport. Nice. <laughs> it yeah. was like, I'm like oh, it's Chuck like, Palahniuk. It's like seeing a movie on the airport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I finished it, like, on the flight, because we were going to, like, Germany or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, this is perfect for this flight. You know, it's like six hours or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, um, I appreciate it. But the movie, I find, like, I still, it's something I watch, like, pretty that and Apocalypse Now, I watch a few times a year, actually. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just if, and you know what I find interesting? I think Chuck Palahniuk's gay, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. I think that's cool because he talked to, actually, I don't know, I don't know, this is like a good tangent, but he got beat up or whatever. And the, before he wrote Fight Club, he went camping with his partner and he got in a fist fight with these guys. Okay. And when he went to his job, no one asked him about, dude, what happened to your face? How come you have a bloody nose? What's up with those, your, your contusions and whatever? And the fact that no one would, everyone wants to avoid confrontation, right. right? No one wants to find out the real deal about anything. They just want everything to be even. <laughs> That's, that was actually, what I, from what I read, that was like the inspiration for the book. And then he, he dialed in all this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good story. Yeah. I mean, he kind of just, like, tied it all up with, like, that nothing fucking matters at all thing. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and um, <clears throat> yeah, there were certain, there were scenes in the movie that I, that were not in the book that, that resonated a little bit more with me. Like, when they were driving, you know. It's like, I mean, this is, like, another fucking tangent, but it's like, you know, I, I, yeah. I'm really into, like, uh. You know, the Book of Five Rings and all this, like, samurai <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? And, like, the samurai always had, like, their own death in mind when they went through life and all that. But there's... I mean, that sounds incredibly morbid. But, like, the reality is, like, Miyamoto Musashi was, like, a master swordsman. But because he always thought about dying, he excelled at all these other creative things, too. Yeah. As well as, like, fighting and killing other guys, you well, know? Well, it's freeing. Because if you kind of accept it, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, right, you're not grasping on to, to life with the kind of like uh, yeah, you take bigger risks too. Yeah, yeah. if you don't fear death as much, or mm-hmm. at least you're atoned with it. Yeah. you made peace with it. You know. Yeah. So that that the Fight Club movie and that whole like mindset like um, kind of like informed one another, and that's why I love it so much. For me, it got Fight Club got me into uh, airplane safety manuals. <laughs> and now and, you, and you've seen this but uh, I, I can't, every time I ride a plane I have to pocket at least one yeah. of the airplane safety manuals from it so I have this stack and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it but I love that design and I don't think I would have been that interested in it if it wasn't for, for Fright Club it's, it's kind of tripped out when you think about flying too in general you know like the fact that these gigantic cylinders don't fall out of the sky on a regular basis it's pretty crazy i think, think about that every time i fly i'm like this has no business being up in the air <laughs> yeah yeah you think it's, it's human yeah. belief right that that's what's doing it not, yeah not science it's just i forget I... people on that plane believe that it can happen so yeah, yeah. that makes sense right from kind of standpoint well, actually, read... that's the whole. And so, really, what you're saying is magic is what keeps yeah yes. planes aloft. Yeah, because that's really what magic is: is yeah. your the intention. The theory of science. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you know, concentrating on something with intention. Yeah. You know, whether or not you're actually doing anything magical, or if you might be enabling yourself to do things, or you might be generating some energy field that yeah. brings in these things, the whether power, or not the will. Yeah, whatever that is. So basically, what you're saying is magic is what yeah, keeps yeah. planes. They, in the... Didn't they just they just scientifically prove that people create energy fields around them, and that those energy fields change in frequency depending on their moods and their like that's just been proven. Is that right? Real. Yeah. Are yeah. there studies? But, yeah, no, like it was. It's like the Guardian, man. It was like, <laughs> it was like a legit. Uh, yeah. Like it wasn't one of those like uh, new age. Things. Yeah, I don't believe anything unless it's backed up with a study and like five references. Blame pharmaceutical advertising for that. It's yeah. Very pragmatic, I can't I, help it. You know, it's funny. I think that like I um I like to see data, but also the the this is the one thing I remember reading this quote from I forgot who it was. It was some, some physicist, some Newtonian physicist, and he was like, "I we basically got based." I'm paraphrasing. He says basically, I think we've got everyone everything figured out. 
<laughs> and I mean, you know, I'm just I'm butchering what he actually said. Yeah. But then they they revealed like the name, and it was like some dude from like the 16th century, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it's like, I, who knows what the fuck's going on? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, and we can, and it keeps changing. I mean, they can't break matter down to a small spark. It only keeps getting yeah. smaller. You know, that's the, the well, some some of the most far out ideas <laughs> are, are coming from like these physicists, you know. And it's like, are, you know, you guys are probably heard about the, the Higgs boson particle yeah. and mm-hmm. CERN, Switzerland. Yeah, that's the, the next big like horror movie is going to be. Oh my god! Probably yeah. started already, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it basically, is Bloodline Two is playing on Sunday. What's that? Speaking of portals. Hellraiser Bloodline. Oh. Yeah. They're, they're two or whatever. Yeah. Where's it playing at? It's uh, in some weird art loft thing in Bushwick, of course. But, yeah, <laughs> but a friend of mine who's a really great artist, James Moore, is, uh, is putting on this screening thing. So it's going like, to incorporate his art, too. But uh, Sunday, October, whatever this Sunday is. 23rd. 23rd, 2016. The reason why I know that is because I, I also have something going on on Sunday, too. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The same place. Well, yeah. they don't conflict. One's in the day. One's in the day, one's in the night. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do both of these yeah. things. Um, we're going at 8.30. Or it's out in Bushwick somewhere? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll give you the info. Man, Bushwick really has become, like, like the spot now. For, at least for now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been that way for, I feel like, five, six, eight years not that long i remember yeah. going out there and being like scared out of my wits because it was just warehouses and like creepy barbed wire and nothing it's still kind of like that, but yeah a yeah, little bit but, but yeah now it's now all that stuff now it's like all the pizza and, and japanese food and like people going on tours and looking at the graffiti on the walls yeah, like really? it, yeah. Tours. huh it's literal weird. graffiti tours that's out of control the uh the hipster disneyland <laughs> hmm weird but the uh, you know the area on Broadway though, that uh, I don't think that's ever gonna come around. Well, maybe. no, that's pretty. I mean, like Myrtle and Broadway and stuff yeah. like that. That's huge. Like, Starting to come that's together. That's where Market Hotel is. And okay. That's where like there's been there's been stuff going on there for since I moved to New York like, uh-huh. twelve years ago, but like eleven years ago. But like yeah, that area is definitely and that's where the big K two meltdown happened. You know, like a lot of people are getting addicted to fake weed out there. It's, it's all happening. <laughs> it's funny that fake weed is addictive. Yeah, is it? It's that's that's true that it's and like ruins your life. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. But yeah. So what's this K two uh, extravaganza that's going on out there? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's subsided by now, but um, you know these delis were selling this this like quote unquote legal weed stuff, and it, and it apparently is really 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 bad for you and makes you and like really really addicted and like people just would start people were just like kind of like became sort of street urchins in the course in the past <coughs> months just like getting addicted to stuff and they just hang around outside of the bodegas oh wow what is it like what is it made of i don't i don't know that stuff but, uh, i know I, I, i've heard of like fake weed you know that you'd order like high times or something like that <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah yeah but, but this stuff is like i don't know something about this particular stuff that they were selling out of a bodega yeah i don't think i'd even heard of it until i saw an ad on the subway like that was it was just like a PSA. It was like don't do fake weed or whatever because it's like super dangerous. And I was like, what is this shit? Does it get you high or? Yeah, yeah, oh. I guess it's really high. Weird. It's like next the gen th- bath salts. The only K two I'm I'm getting high off of is K two the mountain. That was a terrible joke. Please cut that. <laughs> I didn't deliver that correctly. Good Let's God. Do not, do not <laughs> uh, the left hand half boat. So, so, like, um, tell us about. I'm off today. This is your interview right now. <laughs> so you have a new a new press to this whole thing? Yeah. All right. Now what is your actual website? If there's anyone out there who isn't doesn't have the actual magazine and they want to order it from you, how would they get to you? Um they could just go to my site. It's kvlt.co and I have a link there on the page. You can buy it. Yeah, I just have like a big cartel that I set up. It was like super easy. It's really like nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's pretty, you know, it's it's available and it'll ship and everything and yeah. people can get it. Great. Buy some and learn stuff. Learn yeah. stuff. That's what it's for. Yeah. I'm going to utilize this. There's all kinds of things in, in here, you know, that I, that I find very useful. You know, like some of this contractual stuff is like, you'd have to pay a lawyer for that. Yeah. You'd, you'd have to yeah. go to um, a lawyer 
or you'd have to go to like legalzoom.com and yeah. pay like $800 <laughs> or something. You know, that's the real funny thing about all the ads for legal zoom. It's like, you know, you don't have to pay the lawyer, but you got to pay them. Yeah, I know. And then it's just like, bullshit. yeah. I mean, it's called legal zoom and it doesn't really yeah. incite confidence. <laughs> a lot of people use that though, man. Really? Yeah, totally. I used it. I used it to form the coffee, the coffee company. Yeah. Wow. And, um, it didn't exist when we Only. formed, well, if I, if, if this is two years ago or whatever, yeah. actually, I just became a company this year. Oh, so. nice, dude. Yeah, that's fucking cool. Yeah, I needed to do that for certain. You know, I needed to have like a real bank account. And, yeah, mm-hmm. LLC. Yeah. <laughs> but LLC. You know, LLC. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Yep, it is now, which is good, which means business is going well. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's stuff like that that is getting me to a place where people are taking me seriously as a business. Because I, you know, I never, I never ever messed with contracts, and all of a sudden I found myself signing other people's contracts when I got to a certain point. Without any any sort of like uh, revisions or yeah. yeah, yeah. Without I didn't have anyone to show it to. You know, I was just like, okay, wait a minute. Um, what am I doing? What am I signing? How come? How can I make them do the same thing and make sure that I'm protected? Because any number of things can go wrong, and yeah, she is the reason I now have a contract. And all this content is downloadable. There's like a, a card in here and there's like websites where you can download all this stuff on your, right on the computer. Yeah. And it, it's like one of those little download cards you get with an LP sort of. Yeah. It's, you know? That's exactly where I got the idea yeah. from actually. Because I guess I made like a bunch of templates in uh, Illustrator so people can like just open them up and, you know, customize them. And then they have like a ready to go invoice or contract or like proposal or whatever. Just I just wanted to make it like as easy as possible because... These are hard things to do if you have no idea like what you're getting into. It's the best $10 you'll spend this year. <laughs> and there's a... Seriously. Yeah, totally. Because you, you, you will make money and you will protect yourself and you will avoid any myriad of legal and financial issues. I mean, yeah, like the client stuff I found most interesting just in terms of like at what point do you cut off? Like at one point are you being dicked around enough to where it's, it's costing you money instead yeah. of making money? Like, like, what kind of experiences did you have to, that, like, uh, like, got you to the point where you knew enough was enough? I mean, it was just, I mean, A, you kind of have to have confidence in yourself to be able to do that because, like, I got, I got like, you know, just kicked around a lot in, in the early days because you don't know. You're like, yeah, I'll do this for 50 bucks, and all yeah. of a sudden it's, like, three months later, and the client is like, I want my 27th revision, and I'm mm-hmm. not happy with it, and, like, can it be green because I don't like, you know, pink anymore. And you're just like, oh, my God, like, I'm not making any money off of this. And, like, at some point, you just have to be like, fuck off. This project is done. And you use, you use language like that, <laughs> too, I noticed. Like, I tend to curse a lot. There's very frank yeah. language in this. So if you're, you have you know, delicate sensibilities, be yeah. advised. Steer clear. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I can't help but write how I speak because I feel like that's also how – information like this should be like kind of like portrayed because like if you're reading some like dry boring piece of shit like you're not going to like kind of absorb anything from it like it should be like if you're having a conversation with your friend and like this is what they would be saying yeah it's memorable you know it's memorable it's not like reading a manual or something you know it's it's memorable language you know yeah and that's the big thing it's like uh, this kind of information the only place I would get this kind of information from in the past would be like parents, like like maybe or like a friend, you know, someone like you know, you really should consider doing this or this or this. And every time someone starts to give me this information that I, that is important, my brain will like turn off, and I'll stop. You know, I'll check. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't n- like none of this interests me because I'm not built for this to interest me. Sure. And that's why that thing is so cool because the language is just like it's it speaks. It's like you know, it speaks to you in the language that. You understand. You retain it. You retain the information a lot better. Yeah, you don't feel like a a parental unit is telling (laughs) you or like someone of authority is like... Or just some boring-ass motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, some fucking jerk that like... (laughs) With a white collar and a blue shirt. want to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm with... I'm down with that. Totally, man. Yeah. Actually gets the information in there. It's like you're... It's like, yeah, it's like... The same... Similar to inner dialogue. But yeah, that, that definitely was a one of the many factors why people like me don't ever learn that stuff. Because yeah. The people we hear it from are people that aren't going to be able to deliver it to us in a way that we could even apply it or feel like we should apply it. You know, 
like, yeah, I know I should do this, or I know I'm supposed to do this, but it just sounds like a hassle, man. You know, it's like, yeah. it's very different. Like, my dad telling me that I should, like, start investing in, like, a 401k. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Years later, I was like, yeah, maybe it's time. Like, I had to decide. Yeah. The, um, like, the, the thing about you were just talking about with uh, the revisions, man, that's something I hear <sighs> from so many people, man. Yeah. You know, it's like, if they're doing a video or, or some sort of, you know, piece of illustration or whatever, it's the endless... And then changing their mind too, yeah. Which is like something that most people don't understand is a uh, is like a, a change, and it's billable. Yeah. You know, it's like a revision to your original agreement. It's time. Yeah. And time is money, <laughs> and yeah, that's why like uh, like I was writing about like you know flat rates are better than than hourly fees because you get to build in how many rounds. Yeah. And then you know after that it's like well this is gonna cost you fucker because yeah this ain't free. That uh, makes me think back to my experiences in the uh, consulting world of engineering where mm -hmm. you would do a design, you know, and then the client's like, oh, you know, we changed our mind. We want to double the capacity on this, like, piece of equipment or whatever. And it's like, well, you got to pay us again, you know, yeah. because now it's different than what our original proposal was based on, like, you know, whatever, 4,000 BTUs or whatever. And now you want 8,000 and we got to redo, I got to hire another <laughs> guy to draw this thing again. And, yeah. So yeah, it's like it's all the same part of the same sort of continuum of like uh, you know business savvy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean a lot of the times like clients don't really understand the process that goes into it because they think it's like a five minute like oh just Photoshop it, nah bitch like it takes forever. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a few years ago when um actually several years ago um I was involved in developing the proposal for a, a facility down in. For the Navy, the U.S. Navy down in uh, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and it took like almost a year just to even get the actual agreement of what they were supposed to, what they even wanted. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Every time we'd go down there for a meeting, some guy would show, another guy would be, in the, some other dude would be, just show up, some guy, and he's like, "Well, you know, <laughs> we actually reviewed the last, you know, and now we want to do this." But you know, and that was just like a taste of like the kinds of stuff that's out there waiting for people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And also the, uh, the part on estimates and, you know, figuring out like how many hours and like what that's worth and all that sort of stuff. I mean, anyone out there who's like thinking about getting into doing their own thing. I mean, that's something you got to think about, you know, like you were saying, you'd be like in the beginning, you're like, Oh, this is $50 or whatever. But it's yeah. like, you can't shortchange yourself on how many hours that stuff takes. No, I feel like a lot of my friends shortchange themselves on a lot of, like, I have writers, I have friends who are artists, I have friends who are designers, photographers, like, everything, they, I just, I get so pissed when they shortchange themselves, and, like, and then also because they're undervaluing themselves, like, the client is like, oh, like, I didn't know it cost, you know, only, like, $75 for him to draw, like, this beautiful piece of album art that I'm gonna have him change 19 times, like, it, it just, like, it, it makes the whole process suck, and it, and it doesn't bode well for anybody. Right on. So, want to shoot us that uh, that web address again, just so people sure. can check it out. It's a kvlt.co. Okay. And what about like Twitter, Instagram, and that stuff? Um, I'm on wanna... Twitter. If y'all want to follow me, my my name is a uh, Jackie J A C I underscore K V L T. So. And that's you know being that's the way that you actually marketed this thing. It'd be yeah. cool that so that, you know people can hit you on that. And yeah. possibly order something. Yeah. yeah. Or if they have like questions or just like anything at all, you just like hit me up. Oh, watch what you say. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I'll answer them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's where other things started um, that you were involved with the, the, the band camp thing. Oh, yeah. Oh. What's going on? You're playing music now? What's oh, going no, on? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, no, I mean, a bunch of my friends uh, started this whole thing on Twitter. I feel like it was last year. I don't know. It's been going on for a while. It's a. It was like a hashtag that like my friend Jeremiah and my friend Zach started. It's a hashtag Metal Bandcamp Gift Club, and so it started. And I think Jeremiah was just having like a bad day one day, and he just decided to go on people's wish lists on Bandcamp and just start gifting them albums. Oh wow! And so like, and then Zach started doing it, and then like it kind of started being like a whole thing, and like um, like it it turned into like it like it has its own Twitter account now it has like a website like we were featured on Bandcamp's like blog like they were just like writing about it they were like this is like crazy what you can do with something as simple as a hashtag 
like I did the logo for it like we got t-shirts printed it's like it was it's awesome it's just like and it's just built on nothing but people just like gifting people albums like just for no reason at all and especially for birthdays like if you have a birthday and like Twitter knows about it like your inbox is going to be flooded wow it's fantastic so let me ask you a question because you know I'm not technically savvy with a lot of the stuff that these kids do these days so, <laughs> so on band like camp 78 <laughs> on band camp you can actually uh I, I i'm embarrassed to say that i don't know much about the machinations the mechanics of band camp even though there are things out there that i played on that are available on band camp i personally don't really know how to how to utilize it so i mean it's place, right? it's i mean it's kind of like a it's just a really good platform for bands to be able to sell their albums and you can, you can like hashtag your, your albums on there. So like if I want to search for, let's say like, I don't know, black and death metal from Finland, which okay. is, of course is one of my favorite things ever. I can find a whole bunch of that shit on Bandcamp, And then if I want to, I can hit the little heart and like wish list it. Oh. So I just have like a whole list of stuff that like, it's just like how I keep track of like what I listen to and I liked it. I'll buy it later. But it's nice because like the I think the money like most of it goes straight to the band. And, yeah. Like you don't need like a record label anymore. You can just like put your shit on Bandcamp and like there you go. Like you can sell physical copies and everything else. But it's like, it's just really nice and you can like friend people on there so you can like see their wish list and like what they buy and stuff. Oh wow. Yeah. It's, it's really like it, it yes, huh. you're correct. And, and the yes. way you would find out about different bands. I mean, I used to, to like instead of like listening to the radio when MySpace was huge, I would just like go to a band I liked. And they'd have like their top eight yeah. friends, and I would just like surf for hours yeah. from band to band, learning about all these new bands. That yeah, were, like tied somehow or another to the first one. Yeah, and band, so band camp, camp is, is like that. Yeah. So as far as gifting, though, how do you gift or something? Like, do you have to, what is that? I mean, it's <laughs> super easy. You just go on their wish list and. Nice thing people do. Yeah. Like if you like if I if I think the album cover is nice or like if I if I already know that album and love it, I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna send this to you. You hit like gift. And then you enter like the price, and then it just shoots me an email, and it and was you like you pay for it. You pay for oh, it, but wow. they get it. That's awesome. Yeah. So you don't even have to be related to Bank and You can just buy it. Oh, yeah. Right on. And they can go yeah. to the site and download it. That's really cool, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna do that for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but but that sounds really cool, idea. man. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know what a gift is. Yeah. Is on Bank Yeah. 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 Bank is definitely. Yeah. For people search for music. Now. Cool. YouTube perform. Yeah. Like MySpace, and then YouTube now. Yeah. Wow. For all the bands, yeah. You know? yeah. It's super easy to find new stuff on Bandcamp. It's like so, like people are buying so much music on Bandcamp. It's I've done great. that. Yeah. I actually have bought stuff on Bandcamp. I just didn't know about the gifting yeah. aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I bought the Batushka record on Bandcamp. Nice. Yeah, because that's going directly to them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Magua, the same thing. Because mm-hmm. you can only that's get. That's how it's pronounced. We're talking about MGLA. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um because I that's the only way you can like digitally get their music. I think at really? least at the time I was getting into them yeah. you had to buy the vinyl and then you had to order that from poland yeah. basically right, yeah. but yeah, like now nice thing to do you should do it yeah you should do it witchinghour.com yep. yeah <laughs> help but uh the guy the guy that does the merchandise for tombs actually he is distributing the mcguire record too oh nice on his site holymountainprinting.com nice. <laughs> it's all nice. plugs oh, man yes. plugs That's it, you know, once you get to this this age everyone you know has Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like it though. Everyone is doing cool shit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they'll do cooler shit and be more protected if they purchase the left hand path scene. I did not pay him for this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> so, do you what? think that you'd ever do like a revision to this at some point? You know, like there's some, maybe stuff you like want to like expand on or like you know do more with. I am actually thinking about it. Like I. Like, yeah, like, it's nice to have, like, a print thing, but it would be more accessible if it was, like, a digital download. So I've been thinking about doing that, like, kind of just, like, reformatting it into a PDF. And then I want to, if I do that, I want to do, like, an addendum where I would kind of, like, talk to other disciplines that kind of, like, work in this industry, like, like an account person and, like, a project manager. And also, like, I have, like, a writer, my friend, like, Justin Norton, who I I know love. Justin. Yeah, I like, actually do know him, though. Like, not how I said I knew Lev, but I didn't really yeah. know him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he used to work in Invisible, or he still might, do, might, he still may work in Invisible Oranges, right? I think he does, like, a little bit. Yeah. But I think mostly he does, like, just, I think, stuff for Decibel. Wasn't he writing a children's book, too? I need to 
I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm confusing yeah, myself. Brandon. Maybe I actually don't know. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brandon Stoso, I wrote a children's book. Oh, That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but I do he, really do know Justin yeah. Martin. Justin is, is one of my most esteemed writer friends. And I, I think that I would like to tap into his brain about like freelance writing and stuff like that because he definitely has a lot of experience under his belt. So there may be a digital version in the future. But you also like to make books. I do. Time. I just like making physical things. Paper is awesome. I back that just because I think that, I don't know, like I value this more than just like a, a PDF that I could delete on my computer, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it just, you can tell like a lot of, a lot of time and effort went into it. And, uh, well, it's beautiful, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, that, you know, the same thing as like, you know, LPs and stuff, you know, I mean, I like to buy the vinyl format because it looks cool and yeah. it's, you're holding something, but yeah, having both would be cool too. Yeah. You know, you have the limited edition, you know, then you can start like eBaying these for like, you know, <laughs> first, first, uh, you know, printing goes for yeah. of issue one, yeah. cool. start selling it like Comic-Con. And everything. Yeah. yeah, that'd be sick. I would love to quit my day job and just teach people how to run their shit. That'd be great. <laughs> I mean, there'll be an opening soon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Savage Gold. Try it. Woo! <laughs> try it. R- try, try it while you're reading your new, fresh copy of Left Hand Path. Mm-hmm.